So you can just simply right click on the database, go to tasks, and then backup database. Now you're going to notice that you have several different options here. And the reason why all these options are here is because many people have different kind of types of environments. One thing is the backup type. You're going to definitely want to select full on this option if you're going to be doing a full backup set. And if you're going to be moving it to another server, that's definitely going to be an option. We could cover differential, but as of right now, we're not doing a backup set, so we're going to just simply leave it with full. Copy only backup. Um, this means that you can keep a copy of the of the backup, but you cannot actually restore the backup unless you're restoring it in recovery mode. Backup component, which you want to just simply say the database. Files and groups is only an option if you're using uh, enterprise solution and you actually have a files and groups destination location defined. Uh, more on that later. Your backup set again, if you're creating a differential backup and you're going to be doing a backup set, you want to make sure the backup set name is actually the same exact thing as your other backup sets. And then you said the backup set will expire. If you leave zero days, that means that it'll never expire. Um, if you actually go to on and you select the day, uh, you can select the date that it'll expire, or you can simply say 110 days from today's date, and it will use the system date. Now, note that you also have many other options down here. You have the Add button, the Remove button, and if you go to the Options section, you have Backup to the existing media set, and you're going to append to the existing backup set um, if you had a backup set that we were talking about. In this case, we're doing a full backup set, so it's not a big deal. Overwrite all existing backup sets. Um, check media name backup media set to and erase all existing backup sets so if you're going to be replacing a you know backup set that was you know corrupted or defaulted uh, you can go ahead and do so uh, verify backup when finished you can select that if you want to perform checksum with writing and media data um, and continue on error now this is kind of cool this checksum because if you're going to be checking databases quite often uh, as a DBA and you want to make sure that they match across the board uh, because let's say you have a replication like DFS installed and you want to go ahead and make sure that six different servers actually have the correct backup sets so you never have to mistake the fact that if it is the correct backup uh, within that backup set. So it's a really cool thing to have. Under general we're going to go ahead and click on remove because I actually don't like the way that they name it by default. And so we'll click on remove. We'll click add. Now note you can change the location of where it, you want it to go. Now if you do this make sure again that you have that SQL user group enabled into that location or it will fail to back up because it cannot do a write to that location. I personally as a DBA go ahead and put the year and I use the year first. Um, the reason why is because when you're sorting through a lot of different backups this is actually a very helpful uh, tool to do instead of doing the month and then you have to sort through the month and then when you get to the year if you've done four years now you got to sort through all the years. So I do the year first then the month so 04 and then the day this is the 14th. I do an underscore and then whatever the current database name is and then very very important here if you do not put dot BAK at the very end I use capitalization to make it to know that I did a manual backup rather than automatic backup it's just a preference that I've used. It's a very important if you do not put BAK into it, Microsoft, when you go to restore it, will not know it's an actual backup file. You can, however, leave the BAK off if you don't want people accidentally restoring backups, and then when you go to restore, manually put the BAK on. It's just a very important tool. Notice that when you restore, you won't be able to see it. So we'll click on OK. We'll then click on OK here. And notice how it's going to go ahead and execute, and it gives you the progress, and then it tells you, hey, the backup of Venture Works is completed successfully. So if we browse out by going to our Start button, My Computer, C Drive, Program Files, 
Microsoft SQL Server, our MS SQL Server, MSQL, and then our backup folder. Notice how we have our database. Now, one big important thing to note is that sometimes permission sets don't get transferred and they get locked depending on your guys' setup. Now, when doing that, what I'd recommend you doing before you ever restore, because again, again, SQL is very finicky with that SQL group, uh, or it's very explicit, I should say, with that SQL group. Um, you want to make sure when you copy it to your new location to do a restore, you're going to want to copy it to this location or another location if you have that group enabled. But the most important thing to do is actually to go into the file and go to properties, go to security, after you copy this, of course, go to advanced, uninherit, and click on remove, and then re-inherit before you click apply, and then click on apply. And what this will do is make sure and define the fact that you have the current security set for your new server rather than having the old security and TFS permissions transfer over. With that being said, at that point in time your new server should be able to restore this database no problem. So let's imagine we're on a new server and we're going to restore this database and we're going to restore it with a different name than AdventureWorks LT2008. So what we got to do is just simply log into our new server as we've done here, right click, restore database, type in the name of our new database, let's say uh, of AVLT2008. We're not going to restore from a database because we're not just simply creating a new structure of the prior database. We're going to restore from a device and click on the browse button. We're going to then say it is a file that, and we're going to say okay add. And notice how we have our backup right here. We can highlight it, click OK, click OK one more time and notice how we have it down below. Now, you must select the restore button right here. What this does, it'll now gray out, if you notice, uh, well, it did it a second ago, it'll gray out the drop down up here, as well as when I click the restore button, it gives you the options when you're highlighted on the over left on the side. If you want to rename or move when you restore the file upon restoring it, you can. Okay. And again, you can always say override existing database if you have another one with the same name or that's there but not attached because that's very important. It can't be attached if you go to override it. Uh, you preserve the replication settings, so on and so forth. Um, this is very big um, thing. You should, you're going to want to go through these options very carefully. Um, normally, the defaults are okay because you're just simply doing a backup and restore of a full recovery database. So we'll leave it alone. And it restores. And you'll notice that we have everything we have here. Okay. So a quick recap. Again, we talked about how to attach a database. Okay, right clicking and attaching. The difference between the database attaching and detaching versus backup and restore. And the main difference is what? The fact that you're taking the database offline if you detach it and reattach. Common mistakes and misconceptions is that SQL logins transfer. Backing up a database, we covered how to do that. Showed you on how to change the location upon backup. Showed you on how to make sure that you can actually write successfully to the other location based on that SQL user group that gets defined per instance. It shows you how to restore a database uh, after doing a backup and making sure that you use that .bak extension at the very end so the SQL Studio Management System knows exactly on how to pull that back and knows that it is a backup indeed. Again, you can go ahead and copy this location down or just simply click on the link within the uh, description of the video. Now this concludes a, a basic SQL part of number one. If you guys have any further questions, please go ahead and comment or message me. And you can also as well, if you click on the like button down below, that'd be great. 
and subscribe to the channel. I hope you have a wonderful day, guys, and hopefully this was helpful. Bye-bye.